Welcome to our online. Now, it's very important that we learn what happens when some of the parameters change. So what we're going to do here is we're going to keep the sensitivity and the specificity of the test exactly the same. But what we're changing now is the number of subjects that actually do have the disease drops from 4% down to 1%. In other words, instead of having 40 out of the 1,000 that have the disease, it now goes down to just 10 and therefore 990 of them are healthy. Remember, when there were 40 that had the disease with test parameters like this, 44.95%, what did that mean? It meant that the probability that someone did have the disease when they tested positive was 44.95% if there were 40 out of 1,000 that had the disease. But what happens to that number if we now drop to just 10 out of 1,000, only 1%? And then, of course, we can extrapolate what happens if it's 1 out of 10,000, 1 out of 100,000. How does that very same test then affect the results and the probability that the person testing positive actually will have the disease? All right, let's go ahead and again calculate what we need to calculate. For the numerator, we have to multiply the probability that the person will test positive if they have the disease times the probability that they have the disease. So this here, the probability that they test positive if they have the disease, that's the sensitivity of the test. 98% of the people that have the disease will test positive. So for the numerator, we get 98%, and we have to multiply that times the probability that a person who's tested, or the subject that's tested, has the disease. Well, that now drops to just 1%, because only 1% out of the thousand do have the disease, so this now becomes 1%. And since that's in the numerator, that means we're going to get a lower probability. Of course, the denominator also gets smaller because over here, we end up with the probability, the same numbers, of course, the probability that when a person has a disease, they will test positive, multiply times the probability that a person or a subject has the disease. So this becomes equal to that. All right. Next, we have to calculate this portion right here, which is the probability that a person will test positive when they're healthy, multiply times the probability that they're healthy. Now, typically, if the test is good, this will be a small probability. In this case, notice that if the test is 95% specific, well, there'll be 5% false positives. And so that means that the probability that when you're healthy, you test positive is 5%. So that goes in here. And now we multiply that times the probability that when you test somebody or a subject, that subject will be healthy. Well, 99% of all subjects will be healthy, so this becomes 99%. Okay, now we're ready to calculate the new probability. Let's see what that is equal to. So in the denominator, we get 0.98 times 0.01 plus 0.05 times 0.99. And then we bring that to the numerator, 1 over x, and we multiply that times 0.98 times 0.01, and we get 16.53%. So this is now equal to 16.53%. Take a look at that. That is extremely significant. Notice the test is the exact same test. The parameters did not change. It's still 98% successful in flagging those that have the disease as positive, and it only misses 5% of the ones that are healthy and calls them positive. And what we've changed was instead of having 40 that have the disease, we then went down to 10 that have the disease, only 1%. And that change alone, going from 4% of the people having the disease to 10% of the people having the disease, the probability that a person tested positive will have the disease dropped from 44.95% all the way down to 16.53%. So with the very same test, you drop the number of people that have the thing that you're looking for, in this case, the disease that you're testing for, the probability that they actually have the disease when they test positive drops enormously, simply because there's fewer people in the population, fewer subjects in the population that actually have the condition you're looking for. That is dramatic. Now let's say that this drops to 0.1% or 0.01% or 0.001%. If the condition is very, very rare, one out of a million people have it, the probability that when you do find somebody that is positive that they actually have the disease will probably be very low. I think we should probably do one more video with bringing the numbers even lower just to see what that would look like.
So stay tuned and we'll try another one on the next video.